Welcome back to Dodger Stadium. We wrap up the series with the Los Angeles Dodgers and Real Treat, the legendary voice of the Dodgers, Ben Scully. Well, bless Happy your heart. Sunday. Good to be with you. Happy let's, Sunday to you. Well, let's start at the beginning. Take us back to your first game, 1950. Holy mackerel. Well, the one thing I remember was I was terrified. I had done a few exhibition games, but now it's for real. Uh, luckily, uh, Red, we had a great chemistry. Red Barber was like the father. Connie Desmond was the older brother, and I was the kid brother. And so Connie would counsel me and calm me down. Red might chew me out once in a while nicely, like a father to a son. And uh, interesting to think back, it was that old shy park in Philadelphia. And the Dodger pitcher was Don Newcomb. And the other night, well, actually the other day, uh, we had a, uh, a big ceremony here at Dodger Stadium. And Don Newcomb and I stood on the mound together, and we shook hands, and we each said to the other, where in the world did 67 years go? And then I said to Don, well, you know, your name is attached to mine, but not really. And he said, why? I said, well, you were the starting pitcher, and I was assigned to do the middle three innings. And you were gone before the fourth <laughs> inning. <laughs> so he howled. Uh, but that was my first one, yeah. You've had a front seat for half the games played by this illustrious Dodger franchise. And one of the biggest changes in baseball was the move to Los Angeles. Oh, yeah. What was that like as a native New Yorker to see that happen? It was bittersweet. And I use the word bitter uh, not as strong as it means. Uh, I hated to leave my family, my friends. However, I was thrilled that I still had a job. I mean, I didn't know for sure. And from what I heard later, uh, the people out here in L.A., they wanted the local announcers uh, who had been doing the Coast League. They wanted them. And uh, Walter O'Malley said, no, I'm bringing my two. And thank goodness Jerry Doggett and I came out here. And uh, we had a good time. Loyalty. What yes. Oh, of? absolutely. Oh, he was a marvelous man. What's the word? Avuncular? Mm -hmm. uh, he was everybody's uh, uncle and uh, Great man. Great Years man. ago, of course, the Braves and Dodgers had a great rivalry playing in the National League West. We don't see the Dodgers quite as often as we would like. What are your favorite moments of the head-to-head -head series between the Braves and Dodgers? Well, first of all, all I can think about, uh, the first time I heard it, and I know some people are going to think he's got to be nuts, but the first time that they did the Indian chop, mm -hmm. it was right at the most dramatic moment of the game. And I've always loved the roar of the crowd. To me, the crowd is as important as any part of the game. And when they started doing that seminal whatever, I just had goosebumps from head to toe. I realized that, uh, you know, we saw Tommy Glavin and uh, John Smoltz. Oh, we saw a great staff, Greg Maddox. But when I think of Atlanta, I think of the good folks doing the chop and that roar and all the goosebumps that I would get. That's really the most important thing. I know that sounds silly, but that's what I remember the most. Our fans think of you, of course, as calling Henry Aaron's 715th home run, and along those lines, your use of silence after that call was made. Well, you know, uh, it started actually when I was about eight years old, growing up in New York, and there wasn't very much around those times, maybe a Saturday afternoon college football game. And I would crawl under a radio and listen to the game, and it had no meaning to me, Tennessee, Alabama. But the crowd would roar, and that crowd noise just absolutely intoxicated me. And so I've always kept it. And uh, Henry's home run, Gibson's home run, all throughout my career, I like to call a play and then shut up because for a brief moment, I'm eight years old again. I'm listening to the crowd. And of course, with Henry, whom I loved, he was such a nice man. I mean, a superstar going under all kinds of pressure. He always had time to say hello, and I, I really did enjoy him. And I was so happy for him when he did it on our air, you know, that at least we had the chance. And that's when I, uh, I let it go for however long. And I stood there thinking about the impact. And the more I thought about it, that's what I said when the crowd died down about what a great moment, not just for Henry, not just for the Braves, not just for baseball. This was the greatest impact at home run sociologically. I mean, here is a black man in the deep south getting an absolute love ovation for breaking the record of a white icon. To me, that's what made that home run the most important home run that I ever called. 
Obviously, you're a walking, living encyclopedia of baseball. You've seen all the changes that have taken place in our game. What is the state of game of Major League Baseball as you see it today? Well, as I see it, it's fine. Uh, now, maybe I'm only looking at it because I don't travel uh, anymore. Uh, but the Dodgers are averaging over 45,000, and I don't see any other signs but prosperous. It's a great game. I mean, no matter what, it's a great game. And they've come up now with modern ballparks and all that stuff. Uh, every stadium is trying very hard to make the experience uh, a joyous experience for the fan. No matter what happens on the field, they're still trying to make it better. So I think baseball's in great shape, yeah. As you uh, approach the end of your illustrious career, have you thought about what you'll miss the most? Uh, I've been asked that. And uh, I'm now repetitive because the thing I will miss the most is the roar of the crowd. That to me, day in and day out, if I'm not feeling good, it'll lift me up. If I'm feeling good, it gets me to a higher level. So that's going to be the number one. And as years have gone by, uh, and it happens, I'm farther removed from the players. Uh, years ago, I was one of them. I mean, I was 22 years old, sitting in the back of the bus making noises with the rest of the, <laughs> the Humpties, as they call them. In fact, one of the, the loudest clowns way back turns out to be uh, Dick Williams, who's a, a manager in the Hall of Fame. Well, he and I were just awful in the back <laughs> of the bus. <laughs> so, but as the years went by, and all of a sudden it happened, I guess maybe 10, 15 years ago, all of a sudden I noticed the players were calling me Mr. And I realized that that was lovely, but it also told me it's time now. You're no longer in the back of the bus. Uh, you sit up front with the older people, and uh, it's slowly and surely widening. And then I finally thought, you know what? If I tried to work next year, I'd be coming up 90, and that doesn't make sense at <laughs> all. You know. So I thought, you know what? This this will be the time to. Cover and duck and move on. Well, it's funny how life comes full circle. It's funny how broadcasting comes full circle. You may not remember this, but four little words changed my life forever in 1991. You were broadcasting with the Dodgers, and you happened to tap on the glass and said to me after my first open, welcome to the club. Oh, yeah, and I so do as remember I, that. As I wish you well and wish you and your family Godspeed, I have a few words of, of thank you and gratitude. May the good Lord bless you and your family the rest of the week. He way. has done that, and I thank you so very much. Mr. Scully. Oh, gosh. Oh, just old man. God bless you. <laughs> bless you. Back with more from Los Angeles right after this.